guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. So today what we're going to be covering is features and we'll be looking at the um, how to basically use them. Basically um, not a huge advanced tutorial, we'll be just covering the basics and letting you guys kind of play around with it uh, from that point on. So this is the main block uh, and then we have uh, the uh, settings for what order it will load in. So basically each uh, one of these settings up here has a specific order. The highest one in the list will be loaded first and it will generate at before everything else. And then lower in the list, this one right here is the one that's going to be loaded last. So it's in the, crawl, like the uh, proper order that it will basically generate in. You can also add uh, restrictions to dimensions uh, for your own dimensions or the base game ones or biomes as well. So uh, you can add them to the list if you want to. Uh, there's also additional generation conditions which you can test for specific things using procedures if you wish. Uh, they need to return true in order to actually generate. All right, so then we have the MISC features or miscellaneous features. Uh, this is basically all the different types of elements that you can generate with features. Uh, they're pre-configured basically um, to what you can actually generate. For example, bamboo feature is going to generate bamboo. This one is going to create the delta feature. Uh, lake features, we have single seagrass, so it will generate seagrass. Uh, we have block column uh, similar to seaweed, I think. Uh, and then we have block uh, pile, which is similar to the um, hay bales. Underwater coral uh, claw, and then there's the underwater coral mushroom and coral tree. And then we have uh, forest rock. These are the ones that are found in the um, redwood kind of biomes. And then we have the geodes. So this is a fairly new one. You can make your own geodes now. And then we have brown mushroom uh, feature, so that's the huge one. And then the uh, fungus feature, so these are all the different fungus ones that you can generate. And then we have patch feature, this is similar to how the pumpkins generate from what I'm gathering. And then we have blob feature, which is uh, things like the grass, I think, or not grass, like the sand patches and stuff like that. That might be how that one works, I'm not sure. And then we have simple block feature. So that just generates a single block uh, in the, a set location. Uh, there are also ore generation features. So ore features, uh, we have one for a few different ore. There's single ore block. There is ore feature with size and different ant chants. And then there's scattered ore feature. I'm not sure how all these ones work, but that's basically that. And all the blocks below are for those little green parts in there, as well as the gray parts. So that it's kind of like color coordinated, just like procedures are in order how to make things work. So you can make them all set up however you need to for your thing. It's mainly about experimenting and just seeing what kind of results are come out from it. But um, in this case, uh, you can use the tags or a whole bunch of other stuff. So the other thing that we need to do is we're going to need at least one of these features that have one of these uh, dimples on the um, end there. And we're going to connect it to the main block on that side, on the right hand side. And then we're just going to select something that's going to be uh, recognizable in the world. So in our case, um, We'll probably go with red terracotta if I can find it. So this is pink terracotta. We'll probably go with this one right here. And this is just a quick example of how to use it. Let's take a look at some of the other things. We have blocks. These are sometimes used within certain procedures or the blocks themselves. And then we have integer uh, providers. Uh, again, some of these require certain things like, for example, uh, the uh, tags and stuff like that might be used in conditions. Uh, the integers are sometimes needed for numbers. You have a whole bunch of different options here for uh, basically integers and stuff like that. Uh, common placement. So placement is placed below the starting block and uh, all these are basically put into kind of like groups. Um, there's different tiers basically of how 
they work. So we'll start laying out the different tiers of how the base game uh, generates them. I th suggest making it in a way where it's not going to um, do a huge performance. If the game crashes, chances are it's uh, too heavy on performance for loading and it's probably going to crash. Again, this is going to impact performance if it's not uh, restricted well enough. Uh, so you might have to do something like the first two um, blocks, but uh, we're going to just lay them out. These are the first three tiers. I'm just spacing them out in rows or columns, pardon me, so you guys can kind of see. And then we have um, two more tiers, which I have to find the blocks for. So there's this one that goes under this block here, or this column, and there is... Uh, let's see here. Just trying to read the ones. I, I There's a wiki page. I'll leave the link in the description for the wiki page on Amp Creator. So you guys can kind of read over that as well. Uh, it has some information that you can basically find out. So this is the third tier. And then we have the fourth tier, which we need um, another block. Just have to find it first. I'm not sure which one it's under. It could be height perceive height placement, maybe. Uh, or this one. Here it is. So that's the fourth one. And then we need the fifth one, which is under um let's see here. Should be somewhere in here. So this one right here. So those are all the different uh, tiers we have. First tier, these two procedure blocks, or I guess the feature blocks. Then we have the second tier, and then we have the third tier. You don't necessarily need all of them, but you should have something that will help restrict it. Third tier, or fourth, pardon me, fourth tier, and then the fifth tier. So basically you would load them in based on that order. So it would go from tier one, tier two, tier three, tier four, tier five, and basically it would go in that order downwards. So uh, we'll just basically create a very basic per, uh, system. So we're gonna go with, with chance of one to five. This will help with the performance because it's not going to do it every, every time. And then we're going to go with random um, X and Z width. So it's going to offset the X and Z randomly. And then what we're going to do is go with uh, at height. And then I want to replace this block with something that we can get uh, a range with. So I don't necessarily want it at a specific level, but I want it um, basically between a certain level. So I'm going to see if I can't find a block in here somewhere that will um, get what I need. And... I think what I ended up actually f just using was the uh, with un uh, uniform distribution between min and max, which is in the same category. Uh, though you might be able to use some certain conditions based on uh, the these parts right here. There might be some things that you can basically set up. So I was going to do that, but I decided to go with this one instead. And then I just deleted at height, which uh, we could basically specify. So I'm just going to set it between 64 and 128, just so we can see it on the surface. And then I'm going to go and grab this. I'm going to keep that as the current position is air. And I'm going to create um, a procedure condition if all of the conditions are met. So I'm going to grab this one right here, and then we're going to put that onto this block. And then I want to know if the block is not air below. So basically, we have a few options. Um, we could go with the not block air, but this won't really help with the offset. So like in some cases, you might not want to test if there's air. Uh, there, uh, maybe you want to replace a specific block, then you can do that, but um, that's not exactly what I want. I want it to be placed on top of the block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to check if the block position is offset by negative 1 for Y, 
and then I'm going to see if it's basically a solid block. So uh, basically this is the block that we want. We want to set this to negative y. It's going to test for a solid material. So basically like um, stone or grass or something like that. So it's going to check for that. And lastly, we just want to make sure that the biome supports the feature. And that's good when we're using specific biomes and stuff like that or worlds. This will help with the performance a little bit as well. And then we're just going to save that. And then we're going to load up a game. And I'm going to pop in and show you guys basically how it's going to generate. So I'm creating a new world, and we're going to create a creative world, um, just a regular creative world, and then we're going to hop in the game. And it might take a little while for it to generate the world compared to not using features, though this is normal. Um, it's just the way that features have to load. It's trying to find a spot using the conditions and stuff like that. It might hold off at zero for a little bit and then start counting like it has done. Uh, this is most likely because there is a lot of stuff that it needs to check around spawn before it's actually generating. But it should kick in. If not, then you'll probably get an error and the game will probably crash. Most likely it will be due to the features, which I suggest um, working only on features separately after testing and like testing between the two parts. But uh, in the game, uh, we can already see that there is one of them down there. It's, it's still loading in a little bit. It's a little bit choppy. But there is a block right there that we can see that it has definitely generated. And let's go ahead and see if we can't find a couple more blocks around the world. So I'm going to just kind of fly around a little bit and see if I can't find... A few more. Um, there's a lot of terrain around here that is above sea level, so it's quite possible that we'll find another one. Might take a little time though. Uh, the thing with features is unless you basically um, increase the probability quite high, it's going to be a little bit rare. But that's also a good thing because it's not changing too much either, so it won't impact as much on the um, world for generation time so it should be a little bit better uh, they are a more randomized though for where they do get placed so it's very similar to regular structures and stuff all right so let's see if we can't find um, a couple blocks might cut back in once i find some just see if i can't find some over here okay i thought that tree was there was one on that tree, but apparently not. Okay, so we'll go this way. Uh, the savanna, we didn't specify what biome we wanted it to generate in, so it should be in every biome. So that will hopefully help with the finding the locations and stuff. But I'll probably cut back in. Oh, there's one right over here, so we can check that one out. So, yeah, as you can see, it's kind of far apart, but I'm sure there's other ones. And you can tell that it's spawning on top of the grass because there's still grass under it. And uh, we'll just go this way. See if we can't find another one. Okay, there's the village. All right, so I decided to go this way instead. The village is over there. And... Um, I just wanted to see if there's any, and I noticed that there was one right over here as well. Uh, so we're going to just quickly check this out. And again, there was grass underneath it. So uh, that was definitely one. And I'm sure there's probably going to be another one somewhere over here in the biome over in the forest, maybe. There might be another one in the forest. We'll have to take a look and check it out. There's some pigs over there. Uh, the forest is going to be harder to see the thing because it's uh, with trees and stuff, but there does look like there is one right over here, so we can check that. And yes, there's grass underneath it as well, so it's spawning on top of the block. So that's uh, pretty much it for the tutorial. Uh, there's not much more that I can really teach. It's a uh, pretty modular design, so um, it's just a matter of experimenting with it being creative, trying to figure out different ways to use it. Um, sometimes you can use it for grass and stuff like that. I'm sure there's tons of stuff people will be able to figure out how to make more complex things. But outside of that, if that you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.